2023 was jam-packed full of cute and cozy games and I cannot believe how many I actually ended up playing. So I am going to be ranking the cute and cozy games that I played in 2023. Just a little FYI, it's currently freezing in the UK at the moment. So you might hear a heater and I am wearing this. So as you can see, I have made a tier list. S tier is the perfect tier. The games that I think are absolutely perfect, there is nothing wrong with this game, that you should go out and buy it now and play with it. There are no bugs in this game. There are accessibility options because I will be talking about those. I think these games are completely flawless. A and B tier are like middle ground tiers, they're okay, there are a few bugs and glitches maybe, or they've worked on these bugs and glitches, and I think they're like a middle ground good all-rounder game. C tier is they have a few bugs, they, have, they don't have accessibility maybe, not necessarily a bad game, but they're an okay game to maybe get into or to spend a few hours on. And D tier is for the games that I do not recommend buying, there is obvious glares in the game, you should not consider them, I do not like them for one reason or another and we will get into those games shortly. As for the games themselves, some of these games I got given to try for free by the publishers themselves. I'm not being paid to make this video or they have no idea that I'm making this video. I purely got given the game code for free to try out these games. All opinions are my own. I'm literally going to slate some of these games. I will let you know when I got given the code for free so you can make up your own mind for yourself. But as I said, all opinions are my own and none of the publishers know that I'm making this video. I am going in no particular order, I am just going in what tier maker put as the first game and this game is called Growth. Growth is a really good puzzle game for people who love puzzles and it's challenging without being too challenging. Like I can go in and out of this game whenever I want to and I can pick up the game and the controls straight away without trying to figure out where I am or what to do. So in that sense, it's very good. Every time you start a new game, the world changes so it's procedurally generated. And once you think you've finished a section of the world, it expands more, so you get more and more of a challenge. All of the different animals do different things. So the deer can't go over water, but the bees can, but the bees can't go into forest areas where the deer can. And it's so much fun. I love creating like these little mini worlds. And it's almost like a mini collection game to try and collect as many animals as you can while creating these little worlds and figuring out this puzzle. It's really fun. I really enjoy this one. It's like a good, solid middle game. The next game is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And this one I played with friends only. Growth I received for free by the developers. I've never played solo. And I would recommend that you play it with more than two to three people. So as a group of like four or five would be a good option because when I've played it with less than that, it seems a bit repetitive and you kind of get a little bit bored towards the end of the races. Still, it is so, so much fun. It is, it is very reminiscent of the old Mario Karts. And I love that they add all of the old tracks in and the old players. And yeah, it's just a good, solid, good time, to be honest. It is A tier, I would think, maybe S tier, but I haven't looked at the accessibility options, so I don't know, to be honest. I don't know. <laughs> and I haven't played it solo, so I don't know what it's like on the online version or playing solo with the computer, so I can't specifically say whether it is S tier. So let me know in the comments whether you think it is S tier. I'm gonna put it at a solid A tier. Next up is Townscaper. I play this on Xbox and for me, I'm gonna put it at a C unfortunately. It's not a D for me. 
just because there aren't any glitches, the accessibility options are great, but there's nothing really to do in this game. And for me, I need things to do. Even if it's just like little mini quests, things like that, I found I got bored because there is literally nothing to do. For a good five, 10 minutes to get your mind doing nothing and to just relax, it is so much fun. But for me, the price, it's just not worth it because you are literally building houses on an empty water and even the color options aren't great. I couldn't work out how to put the houses on little cliffs and make little like window boxes appear and i know it generates it itself but even then i couldn't work out how it did it so i got a bit frustrated and i made like a little pretty town but yeah that's about it <laughs> and i kind of got bored after 10 minutes next up we have the watermelon game and yeah i mean s tier what can i say <laughs> This game is available on Nintendo Switch. It's a bit like Tetris, but you have different fruits that fall and you have to create different fruits that grow in order to create a watermelon. This is so much fun. It's a bit silly. And once you create a watermelon, it's so, so much fun. There are many streams available if you want to go see those. And yeah, I had so much fun playing this. I created my first watermelon and by doing that, one of the other fruits popped out and it ended my game. And I was so upset. It's my only watermelon I've ever created so far. But yeah, it's fun and you, it's just, it's just a good time really. It's just silly and fun and for the price, why not? Why not? No accessibility options, but next up we have a game called Paleo Pines. Now this game was okay. I liked the fact that there were little dinosaurs running around and you could charm them by using your little flute whistle and get their attention and kind of like a mini creature collector game and with some farming mixed in i really liked that the art style was really cute i loved the little characters i loved the townsfolk they were really cute the dinosaurs were the best bit about this game but the thing was you can't collect all of the dinosaurs that are available so there are lots of different dinosaurs with lots of different color patterns but you can't collect them all you can only have so many of these dinosaurs on your farm and the idea is that those dinosaurs help you farm so one helps you uh water crop so one helps you collect crops, one helps you do something else and something else, but you can only have so many dinosaurs on the farm. So it was a bit annoying because I want to be this collector and I want to collect all of the dinosaurs up and be like their mama bear, but I couldn't. So that let me down a little bit. It may be like a B tier game, I think. So solid B. Yeah, solid B tier. The next game we have is Everdream Valley. Now this game, again, it was really cute. The art aesthetic was really nice. I love the fact that you have your farm with your nan and grandpa this time, so they're not like sent away. I love the little mini games at night. So the animals on your farm at night time, you have dreams about these creatures and they give you mini games. So one time you will have you will be an owl and you have to fly through the sky as that owl or you have to be like a chicken or a bee or something. It's really fun. I love the little mini games. I like the fact that you get a pet day one and it is a dog and they help you on the farm. It's like your little best friend. I like that, but it was very quest based and there wasn't much interaction with any townsfolk or anything there wasn't many people around it was basically you on a farm and that's all you did um so that i found a bit weird other than that great game again with paleo pines solid b tier 
those two great and at Everdream Valley, I got gifted for free. Next up, we have Bilkin's Folly. And this game is S tier. Completely S tier. Absolutely loved it. Top notch. Accessibility wise, not many options. But I absolutely loved the art aesthetic of this. It was like a pixel game, think Stardew Valley. And there was elements of puzzles in it and riddles. And it's not a farming sim, you are a pirate, you get shipwrecked and you've got to find your ship crew and find your lost dog Drayton in the process. All while solving riddles and hunting for clues and searching for buried treasure. Some of the riddles were so much harder than others, they were so much fun. I absolutely love this game. I played this one on PC but I think unlike Nintendo Switch this would be a great game to take on the go with you. I didn't find any bugs whatsoever in this game as I was playing it. Top notch, so so good. Next up we have a game called Chessorama and this game I'm gonna put in a C tier. This is because a bit like Townscaper, it's a good 5-10 minute game where it is a puzzle game but after about 5-10 minutes it gets a little bit boring and you don't want to keep doing the puzzles over and over again. Chessorama is really good if you really love puzzles. It is a chess based puzzle game where the chess pieces actually move like chess pieces on a puzzle board. So say you have the knight piece, the knight can only move three up and one across or three across and one up. You then have to solve the puzzle board with that knight and complete it. It gets harder and harder as the levels go up with more and more chess pieces added to the game and different scenarios as well. So sometimes you will have a farm, sometimes it will be a soccer field, sometimes it will be a samurai player. It is a lot of fun, just in small doses. And this game was gifted to me for free on Xbox. Next up, we have a game called Lakeberg Legacies. Now this game I really, really love. And I have to say they have put bug fixes into it and it's still in early access. And for me to really love a game this much is ridiculous. I cannot put it at S tier for that reason, but it is gonna come to A tier. I just realized my rear cart's at S tier. I need to move that down, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so Lakeburg Legacies is a social based village management where you play a matchmaker to create the village of your dreams. You start off with one villager, you need to matchmake them to help your kingdom thrive, create more houses, more employment opportunities and eventually a kingdom with a sovereign. This is so so much fun. I love the matchmaking system that comes into play where you have to actually pay attention and realise what the village is like and dislike. It actually impacts on the matchmaking. There's so much going on in the game, including marriage, divorce, babies, infidelity, little mini games. You can run a kingdom. Ernesto comes with his llama to give you supplies, which is the best bit. It's played over years, not days. You have to keep an eye on your resources, your villagers, your livestock, your money, your gems. There is so much going on. It is so, so much fun. And the villager art style is so, so cute. They recently added a multi-save as well, which I'm so thankful for. So you can have more than one village going at once. 
So I, I'm just in, so in love in this game. It's a definite A tier game for me. This game was also given to me for free on PC. Next up we have a game called Critacrove. Now this is on beta access at the moment. It has just come off it and I think it will be out for early release sometime this year. But this is a game a bit like Animal Crossing where you come to a desert island and have to get resources to build up the town, build up your house and get villagers from another nearby deserted island and bring them to your island. It has a creature similar to Tom Nook, who is the island's representative, who you talk to a lot to give you quests and you have to pay money to upgrade general things. Critacrove is a bit different as in it is open world, so you get to explore the world with a boat and you get to deep sea dive as well for more resources. It is completely open world and the world is massive as well, even in the beta access this is massive world. The creature customization that you get given is astounding. The character that I made was really cute, but I didn't realize you could make a panda if you wanted to. I didn't see that until I saw another creator make a panda. I was like, oh my God, I could have made a panda. So yeah. I'm gonna be looking at this one very closely in 2024. This was a really good game. I'm gonna put this at B tier, I think, just because it's not fully out yet. It was only the beta testing, so beta, B tier, yeah? Next up we have Coral Island. Now, I don't know where to put this game. <laughs> so if you didn't watch my December games played, I put this D tier. And in 2023, if we're going for games played 2023, Coral Island would be D tier. Because I play Coral Island on Xbox and Coral Island had a bug breaking Xbox bug where it completely broke the game and it was unplayable. So I don't really know my feelings around this game. Now it is fixed. So in 2024, I am able to play Coral Island. I love it. I can now go deep sea diving, see mermaids, add stuff to the museum, go through all the cutscenes. It has only crashed once so far which I mean, come on, is impressive. So for me, maybe I will put it at C tier for now. Um, but just so you know, 2023 Coral Island would be D tier. Next up, we have a game called Bug and C. And from a D tier to an S tier game, this game is absolutely S tier. I am in love with this game. This was in my December played games as well, but I've played it since and I am in love with this game. There are no problems with the game. There are some accessibility options, but not a lot. I like the fact that they've included a streamer option to the game so you can choose where to put your camera if you want to. That's quite cute and a little fun effect. But the game itself is so much fun. You don't realize how much is actually included in this game. And there is so, so much to do. It's literally a game that you just want to say, just one more hour just one more hour just one more hour it's so much fun it's way more than just catching bugs you have to sell them and create a bug museum or you sell them to the local school and you get more money for selling bugs you then have to complete side quests or quests for the villagers you then get to open up different areas of the map. The map is huge anyway, but it gets even bigger. There's then this bug heist that you have to figure out what happened in it. And the seasons are only 15 days long and the bugs depend on different seasons. So it is really fast paced and really quick, but really fun. And it's so interesting and I absolutely love it. It's definitely an S tier game for me. From an S tier to a D tier game again, we have a game called Cassette Beasts. Now, I've done a previous video on this game stating why I put it in D tier. And I think probably that is probably too harsh. 
but I'm gonna stick to my guns and keep it in D tier. Cassette Beasts is a turn-based battle open world RPG and I love the art style of this game and I love the concept of this game. You basically awaken in this new world where you don't remember anything that happened to you, you don't know who you are, and you find out that the villagers have gone through the same thing that you have and you have to figure out what happened to you and what happened to the village and the villagers. I love the concept. I love the cassette tape idea. You use the cassette tapes to transform into battle. You transform into the creatures themselves to battle and you get to collect the monsters as well by battling each of them. I just couldn't get into the game. I couldn't get into the battle system. Maybe it was too complicated for me. And I couldn't get into going around the world and trying to get to every battle. I don't know what it was about this game. I just couldn't get into it. I think I wanted it to be more like Pokemon and it wasn't. It's completely different to Pokemon. It's not that. And I think I wanted it to be. Don't know what I wanted it to be. This game is a completely me issue, not the game issue. <laughs> yeah, for me, D tier, but it shouldn't be, if that makes sense. So again, we're gonna go back down to a D tier. This one is called Hello Kitty Adventure World. And uh, this one is on mobile. I played it on the iPhone and yeah, just don't bother. <laughs> I played it because some people said it was like Animal Crossing and it was gonna be like the new Animal Crossing. And it's so cool because it's got Hello Kitty characters. And yes, it does have Hello Kitty characters and Sanrio characters, but it's just awful. <laughs> it's great if you like quests. If you like running around, going from quest to quest to quest to quest, fine. But you don't talk to any of the villagers. I call them villagers characters. You don't talk to any of the characters. The only gifts that you give them are the gifts that the other characters have given you. There are a few mini games, so you get to go in a few like different temples, but at the end, it is just a quest item that you had to collect. So you then take it to another character who gives you another quest to take it to another character who gives you another quest to take to another character. It's a lot of running around for no real reason. So for that, I just didn't like it. So it's a no. Next up, we have a game called Sky Tales. And this is an S tier, absolute S tier. This hands down wins every accessibility feature that you could think of. Sky Tales has worked with able gamers to create this puzzle based mindfulness adventure game. You play as Sky, who is a friendly dragon and you basically go around the world solving puzzles and going through this beautiful magical realm creating music and solving mini games and preparing for like this mini festival that the villagers want to hold i absolutely love it i love this game you can change absolutely anything you want down to the music the colouring of the game, the appearance, absolutely everything. It's everything that I needed in this game. Every time I go to a new game, the first thing I do is look at the accessibility options because I genuinely need them. I am one of these people that needs accessibility features in a game. And this game ticked every single box for me. It was everything I needed and more. It was, it was truly breathtaking and I, I basically cried when I saw it. It was, it was astonishing. I finished the game and I've started a new game. It's basically the same game. <laughs> you can't 
there's no replayability of this game but i started it again because i love it so much it's so beautiful i love the music that you can create but you basically just fly around as a beautiful dragon and there's little like uh music notes that you can fly past so it creates like a little little breath of music and it's just so pretty and so graceful and it's it's beautiful i love this game if you like something that's very relaxing not too challenging and you like a little bit of puzzle this game would be just breathtakingly beautiful for you you'd love it absolutely love it and this game i did get for free on nintendo switch next up we have a game called juice on and a guest here i cannot stop thinking about this game and it's been three months this game is a relaxing and calming climbing based puzzle game where you play as a rock climber getting to the top of a tall tower and finding mysteries along the way you find out that people used to live on this tower there are mysteries and secrets about why as you start to climb you figure out what happened and the mysteries revolving around this the ending is so beautiful it is absolutely stunning honestly you will never get this storyline out of your head it has been three months and i still cannot get over it the scenery is breathtaking the way they have designed this game is beautiful you can honestly tell that the people making this game are rock climbers or that they have worked with rock climbers in making this game because every little detail between the way the character moves their arm or the way the rope moves or the way it repels or the way it gets caught on things or the way the character jumps or gets stuck or things like that you can tell rock climbers were involved in the making of this game because it is exactly like you would find a rock climber climbing a tower it is astonishing it is beautiful it's so interactive as well i played it on xbox and the way you use the xbox controls are so much fun and i loved it so much i loved this game i really think everybody should go out and play this game it was so much fun next up we have stardew valley now stardew valley wasn't new in 2023 but i played it in 2023 and i can't put it at s tier even though lots of people would like me to put it at s tier i think i'm gonna put it like a tier maybe even b tier i'm gonna no i'm gonna put it a tier <laughs> i'm gonna put it a tier just because there are no instructions there are no tutorial you are just left with this game and told figure it out so for someone like me that needs tutorials i have no idea where to start and yes the game is beautiful and it's iconic and it's stardew valley but i had no idea what to do i was just like given my granddad's farm and told to deal with it so um it took me till year four to do the community center and i'm proud of that <laughs> next game we have is full of porcupine and i haven't fully played this game just to let you know that is gonna fully sway my opinion but i think it's a solid b tier game full of porcupine is really cute you get to play as a pigeon doctor who helps their patients and it's a game where it brings in real life where it is trying to tell you a bit about the healthcare industry while you play this cute and cozy game and i really like that aspect of the game where you are trying to take care of this healthcare industry trying to take care of yourself as well and your own needs while being this kind of cute pigeon so yeah i really like this game i don't know the ending i don't know the full story so bear that in mind next up we have luigi's mansion 3. again i only played this in 2023 and i haven't played it all to the full end because i 
Don't know how. So it's C tier. Hear me out. Again, there's only a little tutorial. So for me, I don't really know how to get any further. Once I go in and out of games, I kind of forget all of the instructions and forget how to do things. So going in and out of Luigi's Mansion 3, I forget how to control Luigi and his vacuum. <laughs> So I forget how to vacuum up all the ghosts or get around the mansion or where I'm supposed to go. When there's not a tutorial or not reminders, I forget very easily and I'm kind of stuck on level six. So it's a C tier, sorry. Next up we have Moonstone Island. This is S tier. This is an amazing S tier game. Even with the DLCs, it is amazing. Not many accessibility options, but it is so, so good. This is a creature collecting game where you play as an alchemist on your first year of training and you follow your villagers traditions by moving to an island in the sky. You crash land without your magical broom or any of your alchemy supplies and you need to explore ancient temples, dangerous dungeons and explore the open world with a hundred islands. Brew potions, decorate your house. You get to place your house anywhere in this world, which is absolutely amazing. And you can decorate all of the islands, which is incredible and just blows my mind. The creature collecting aspect, you go onto the islands and they are card based turn battles where you encounter these creatures and you can choose whether to defeat them or whether to keep them and store them, add them to your collection, have them help you in battles. And there are over 70 of them. They're all different depending on which island you go to. So there are some nature spirits, some fire spirits, some water spirits, a bit like Pokemon in that sense. I love the art style of this game. I love the pixel style of it. I love that there is so much to do. You're never bored in one day. And there are so many islands to explore. It is ridiculous. I haven't encountered any bugs yet, any glitches. Yeah, I love this game. This game was gifted to me for free on PC. Next up, we have a game called Wildflowers. Now this game is S tier again. This game is so beautiful. It is so good. Wildflowers is all about you playing as a person called Tara and you come to a place called Fairhaven to work on your grandma's farm and you soon realize that you are a witch. This is so much fun. The game is fully voice acted with over 35 hours of voice acting in it. And it brings the characters to life like no other game that I've experienced. It makes you want to interact and talk to all these characters, romance them, be best friends with them. It's so, so much fun. And and there are witches, werewolves, covens. There's so much to do in this game. And obviously it's a farming sim, so you farm, but the farming is more encapsulated in witchcraft. So you have to cast spells and change the seasons by magic and craft potions to help with farming and fishing is to help with your witchcraft. And honestly, I would recommend this to anybody who wants to get into farming, but doesn't really know where to start. This is a great game for this because it really gets you into the farming aspects of it. It teaches you how to do it, 
but it also makes you really love the characters and gets you engrossed in the game itself. It's such a lovely game. I love this one. And Wildflowers I received for free on PC. Next up we have Coffee Talk. Now this game is like an immersive comic book that you get to play as a video game. You are a barista and you create coffee and chat to the local residents about their lives in Seattle, a world not too dissimilar from our own, but a world that has humans, goblins, werewolves, vampires, and more. You uncover people's stories throughout the game, and it's a very calming and relaxing all round good time. Coffee Talk for me, I would put A tier. It would be S tier, but for me, I like a bit more interaction in my games and you are just listening to these characters' stories and occasionally creating coffees. So for that, it's not quite S tier, but lots of people will put it at S tier. And if you're one of them, let me know in the comments down below. Next up, we have a game called Pizza Possum. Now this is gonna be a solid B tier for me. This game is all about playing as a possum where you try to eat as much things as possible to reach the very top and eat the pizza. It's an arcade game where you focus on not getting caught. This game was very, very fun. I love the art style of it. I love the fact that you get to like hide in the shrubs and wait for the dogs to kind of like turn around and then run and eat all the food. And then if you did get caught, try and run as fast as you can away from them and hide until they couldn't find you again. It was really fun, but I think there was a glitch or maybe I wasn't good enough, but there was one section where I just couldn't get past. I think there was too many dogs in that section or something. I just couldn't get past it. So I just couldn't make it to the very top and it would be even more fun in a two play option i was just playing it by myself so i think probably that's why i didn't have as much fun as you probably could have and this game i received for free on pc next up we have a game called roots of pacha and this game i'm gonna put in s tier this game is so good the concept is so much fun i love the fact that it's based on the stone age so it is a farming sim, but it's based on the Stone Age era. So you start off with a farm and you have to develop skills and items to develop your thinking and the villagers' ideas on what farming is. It's not a standard farming game. I really like that. And I love the map that it comes with. I love the ideas behind the game. I love that you already have a house when you're set up. You don't have to build one or create one. There's somewhere to sleep straight away. And I really love the concept behind the game and everything you do is for the villagers and the village itself. Not for you personally, it's to help the village and to help the villagers create and build and for the village to flourish. Not for you and your own personal growth, if that makes sense. I really like this idea and it was really fun to do. And the fishing was really fun. I had a good time fishing, which usually I hate fishing. Like it's the one thing I despise in a farming sims they always try and make it a different way and I always hate it, but this time it was actually quite fun and it was okay and I didn't hate it. So thank you. S tier game, I really enjoyed it. I got this for free on Nintendo Switch and it ran so smoothly, it was so good. I didn't have any bugs, any glitches, it didn't drop out at all. Not many accessibility options, but it was good. I will say the controls are a bit iffy for me. They're a bit clunky. I think that's because it was optimized for the Nintendo Switch. Because it was on PC first, they had to then take it down to Nintendo Switch. But other than that, absolutely fine. 
love it. Next up is Palea and I absolutely love this game. I have it on PC and Nintendo Switch. On the Nintendo Switch, I absolutely love it. I don't have any of the dropped frames that people talk about. There is a little bit of like the blurry graphics, but that is because it is going from PC, which is like a high spec game, to Nintendo Switch, and it is going on internet to Nintendo Switch. So it will struggle a little bit graphic wise, but for me, that doesn't bother me and I don't really care. I'm not seeing any of like the glitches or the, or the dropouts that people are seeing. It's not crashing on me at all. On the PC, it runs so smoothly. I absolutely love it. For a free game, I still cannot believe that this game is free. The amount of stuff that you get in this game is undeniable and i would not be surprised if they charged like 30 pound for this game i would not care i would still get this game because it is absolutely amazing i love this i love the characters in this game they are so cute i love the storylines i love that you can quest alone it doesn't have to be with other players even though it's an online mmo game you can still quest alone and it still works really smoothly i absolutely love that i love the farming in it but yeah i'm just blown away by this game and i love that they add things all the time i still cannot get to the top of the tower yet the one that they've got at the moment the quickest to the top no nope still fall off every single time cannot do it palea is s tier for me i'm sorry it just is next up we have spells and secrets now i'm gonna put this at c tier i think it's a good game it's a good game if you like dungeon diving and you like to collect as many points as possible to use spells to defeat bosses defeat creatures gain points to get more spells and go in the dungeon again and use those spells to defeat the bosses defeat the creatures and do it all again it's a good game if you like to play with other people as well as it has a co-op mode and the character customization is really impressive. It's like I've never seen before in the amount of stuff that you can create in this character customization. The characters are really nice. The aesthetic is really nice. It's just the dungeon diving gets a little bit samey after a while and there is only so many spells and times you can go in the dungeon before it gets a little bit boring. And this game I got for free on a PC. Next up we have Spiritfarer. So this game is all about dealing with death in a really positive and beautifully emotional way. You play as a fairy master, caring for your spirit friends by cooking, fishing, farming, or exploring the world through questing to build your boat for your spirit friends and afterwards and release them into the afterlife. It deals with death in a really heartwarming, beautiful way. I can't describe the feeling that this game gives me because it's really, truly just heartwarming and emotional, but without being too dark or difficult. It affects you and your life, but it makes it so it's not heavy. And it truly is a beautiful, memorable game. And even though it's an older game, I have played this one in 2023. It's on, I, it honestly, I can't put it into words how much this game truly means to me. This one is an S game for me. Next up, we have A Song of Nunu, A League of Legends Story. Now this game, I'm gonna put at A tier. I think I might have put it at an S tier at one of my monthly play games played videos, but I'm gonna put it at A tier just because the when I played at the end of the game, it kind of lagged a little bit. Now I don't know whether that's because it is my PC and it is slowly dying, or whether that's because of the game. 
So I'm going to put it at A tier just for that reason. It has a few accessibility options which are always welcomed and this game is really really cute. You play as Nunu who needs the help of a yeti to go through the magical fjords to help find his lost mother. You uncover mysteries and secrets and solve a few puzzles along the way. It is partially voice acted as well and it is so so much fun to play. I actually want to do another playthrough of this game. There's no like replayability of it, there's not like another playthrough, it's the same game but it was actually so much fun to play. I just want to play it again. <laughs> the puzzles and the game aspect are really fun you have to play between nunu and the yeti to solve the different puzzles sometimes you play as both of them sometimes you play as one or the other you have to fight wolves occasionally but it's not like hardcore or intensive it's just a really fun good wholesome time and i really enjoyed it this game i got for free on pc next up we have a game called spirit tea i i still don't like this game i've tried several times to get into this game and i just don't like it i think i'm gonna put it d tier i just can't get into it don't get me wrong, I really love the bathhouse management of it. So you manage a bathhouse with spirits and you have to run this bathhouse to take care of the spirits, tend to them, keep the temperature of the bathhouse controlled, seat the spirits, cook for the spirits clean the spirits occasionally, not sit some spirits near the other spirits to make them as happy as can be, and then they give you a monetary coin value depending on how much fun they had during that time. That aspect is really fun and I really enjoyed that, but in between that bathhouse management aspect there's nothing really there in the game making money in the game is quite hard so you have to make it in the bathhouse and it kept sending me reminders to upgrade it or to get this and that and because it took me so long i kept getting multiple reminders so that frustrated me and then when i was upgrading the bathhouse you get like days off and I thought it would be fun to like explore the town, get to know the villagers, or find extra spirits to bring to my bathhouse. And to find extra spirits, you have like riddles that you need to go around the village and solve. But some of the riddles are like, um, you can only find this spirit on a Thursday. So I would have like three days where I did absolutely nothing. So I would just fast forward these days because my bathhouse is being upgraded and I couldn't find the spirit and you can't farm. So I was doing nothing. So the game had nothing to do and I couldn't get into it very well. So I'm sorry, it's a D tier. Next up we have Steamworld Build. And this game is gonna be S tier for me. I've got a lot of games at S tier, I'm sorry, but this is another one of those. I played this on Xbox and it was so much fun. It is kind of like a mixture between Two Point Hospital or Theme Park World. I know I'm taking it old school, but it's, it's like those games, but with a storyline quest element to it. You pick a starting map that you want. I picked the fossil park and you have this train line running through it and you drop down workers and buildings to gain you resources and resources to get you further on into the game. The more workers you have, it gets you more resources. And once you've got enough resources, you can then upgrade those workers to get you different workers. Those different workers require different resources. So you then have to add different buildings onto your map 
and it goes up and up and up. Then you've got another element of a mine and you have to use workers to chisel away at the mines, fight creatures, construct armory pieces and find rocket pieces so that the workers of this map can possibly escape. Through this storyline quest you find out what happens and it is so much fun. Once you think you're getting the hang of it and that your workers are satisfied and your resources are going well, something else happens or you add another worker lot into the mix to change it all up and I really really enjoyed it and you think you're finished with the storyline but it just keeps going on and on and it's so much fun. There is an option not to play the storyline at all and it's like a free play mode but yeah I thoroughly enjoyed this game. There were no bugs, no crashes, no glitches. I really liked it. Next up we have I think my game of the year and this is called Thirsty Suitors. This one is going top S tier for me. I cannot stress this enough how much I loved this game. I think everybody should buy. This game is all about you playing as a person called Jala who comes back to her childhood town to confront her exes and repair her relationship with her mother sister and grandma. You skate around town to confront your exes in turn-based battles. You need to find out what's happening to the local skate park and you also need to make amends with your sister before her wedding day, all while asking for forgiveness from your mom during cooking. This game is so emotional. The storylines between the characters are so rich and so well thought out. You can't help but do real life comparisons between the character and yourself. My favorite character has to be Jala's dad. Even though he hasn't got a big role in this game, he's just that very supportive fun loving dad that you want in your life and he plays that role so well i just love him there are skating challenges which i didn't like but the accessibility features in this game are so amazing you can turn off the skating challenges if you find them too hard which i did and it changed the whole game for me it changed the outcome of the game from me disliking the game to it being my 2023 game of the year which is incredible there is cooking in this game and you get to experience indian asian cooking in a real authentic way which is beautiful you experience jala's emotions and sexuality and feelings and you just can't help but bring up connections in your own personal life and i really enjoyed that about this game is even though it's not true to true life you can take away some elements of that hands down best game of 2023 and last game we're going to talk about is called unpacking and this game i think again is going to be s tier i mean i don't think there is a person who has played it who is going to think differently. Unpacking is a beautiful and mesmerizing game. It is all about pulling possessions out of boxes and fitting them into a new home while experiencing characters up and downs of a person you've never met. You unpack their life over eight house moves and you get to see the progression of their life. And the story is so beautifully told, but without saying a word. And there's something so peaceful about just unpacking and putting items in places that fit that makes you want to keep coming back to this game and making hundreds of people love it so much. It's a really beautiful game with a really beautiful ending and I hope they do another game like this sometime in the future because this one was so much fun to play and that is it. 
that is my tier list of 2023 cute and cozy games. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 games at S tier. That might be unlucky for some, but it's lucky for me. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you did and subscribe for more cute and cozy games. There are lots more coming in 2024, so I hope you all enjoyed it. As always, a big thank you to my channel members. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you would like to become a channel member, please do so down below. Have an amazing rest of the day wherever you are, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.